Hi everybody. Hello there. I'm Jerry. And I'm Linda. We're the newcomers. And as most of you know, we bring you our adventures from here in the villages. Now we're a retirement show, so we're going to try to teach you things that we've learned and are still learning about retirement, about growing old and making life easier for yourself. I'm not old. You old? No, no, you're not really old. <laughs> But on today's show, we're going to take a look at the aftermath from last week's storm. The Villages is America's most married place. That's right. And are we going to run out of water? Do you need to be a millionaire to live here? And a brand new bubble wrap. Hi, Jerry and Linda. In the middle of Hurricane Helene, I'm going to tell you about a piece of equipment that you can put in your house that will alert you to storms before they get there. It's on this week's bubble wrap. And lots more. Hit it, Wally. Send us your questions, we've got your answers, Jerry and Linda's Mailbag Monday. Thanks to everyone that watched our live show on Wednesday. We had a good time. We did have a good time. That was the first time we had someone come in and sit down with us and talk live. So that was a lot of fun. Well, I mean, we've, we've had people come in many, 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 many times. But that was the first time they came in on a live show. Right. During one. And this coming week... We're going to have another live show, and our featured guest is going to be none other than the under-sheriff, Pat Breeden. And we're going to talk all things villages regarding crime, security, golf carts, mm -hmm. and I think that's going to be a great show. If you have any questions for the under-sheriff, just be sure and send them in via email to villagesnewcomers.com. And uh, we'll talk about things during the show, and you can comment live back and forth with him if you wish. We also talked with Peter Bernard, and we had Rob McKevitt on the show. They were both filling us in on things to do to prepare your home for the uh, upcoming storm and how to get yourself ready, and that was good. We were ready, and uh, it's always better to be ready and not sorry that you didn't collect your water or didn't have your towels ready or your batteries or flashlights. So uh, it's always good to review those, those things. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. And we also had an appearance by one of the village's top entertainers, Patrina. She is something else. She's a ball of fire. Mm -hmm. Really good, really good uh, entertainer and an even better person. Yeah. Now, we can use some new questions. And just like we said, when you, if you write in one to the undersheriff, you can also send us questions regarding anything about our life in retirement, about the villages, about Central Florida, attractions, whatever. Just send them into villagesnewcomers at gmail.com. Hey, if you haven't subscribed yet to our channel, do that right now. There's a button right there, and just hit that yeah. button to subscribe. Is it over there? I don't know where it is, but just no, hit that it's button. It's right down there. And even push the like button. We do appreciate it. Subscribe is more important than like, but they're both important to YouTube. Mm -hmm. You know how you see things in your feed that tell you, hey, look at the largest toad ever found? That's because a lot of people like that, and it was popular. And the only way YouTube knows if people like it or not is if you either comment, like, and subscribe, and we would really appreciate that. Well, let's get things going with a video viewer question. Hey, Jerry and Linda. We're always tuning in to catch up with you both and can hardly wait to meet up once we're down there. Our home's officially on the market now, and as soon as it sells, we're headed straight for Florida. Quick question for you both. We heard some chatter about the golf carts with two rear-facing seats versus the ones with four forward-facing seats. Is it true that they're essentially the same size, with just a slight difference in length due to the golf cart rack? We'd appreciate your insights. Warm regards. Debbie from Friday Harbor, Washington. Wasn't she cute? <laughs> well, that question is a good one. And you know, I was telling Linda, we have seen more four-seater carts lately than we have ever seen before. We have. We have. And they're nice. We have been in a couple of them. Two of our friends, good friends, have them. And uh, they're great. They're very comfortable and they're sporty. Uh, they're great. Yeah, we, uh, we're talking about the front-facing four seats mm -hmm. where you have two facing this way and behind you two people, just like riding in a car. Yeah. Now, the way it has been up until now, we've seen mostly four-seat carts where the back two seats face backwards. Mm -hmm. And that means that cart cover that's over your head, you know, with the little panel, yeah. 
boy, for me, it hits about right here. I can't see a thing back there. And I still am kind of hunched you over. You have to kind of push that thing up. To There's not a lot of up. room. No. And you have to kind of squeal your legs over to the side. And uh, I'm wondering if, even if the bench is a little bit shorter. It's a short one, yeah. And so uh, we, don't, we don't care for those much. And we don't have one. We have no. two, two seat carts. <laughs> but your question was, is one bigger than the other? Well, your regular golf cart, just the, the basic regular one, is about 94 inches long. Okay. Okay. Almost eight feet. And then you get the one with the rear facing seats, the one we don't like so well. Although it's cool, if, especially if you're only going to be hauling little people. Yeah. <laughs> they're about 108 inches long, so they're longer. Okay. And then you could go up to the front facing four seater, and those are about 128 inches long. Okay. So that's almost 11 feet. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they get bigger as you go, but I think it's worth it, especially if you have room in your garage. Yeah. Because so many times, if you get three people here, three adults, they're not going to fit in a two-seater. And if it's yeah. a big boy like me, <laughs> he don't want to sit in the back. Yeah. So those four-seater facing fronts, but you're going to spend uh, almost twenty-five grand on one of those yeah, they're more for a brand new for sure. one. Yeah. They're more expensive, but they're super nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, we luckily have some friends that to have them and <laughs> loan them to us on occasion. So that's that's good. <laughs> Well, we're going to talk to you about the storm we had Thursday. Thursday was our hurricane day, and we were prepared. We got uh, everything ready that we thought we should, and uh, we waited, and we waited, <laughs> and we didn't get much rain, but you know what? We were blessed. Uh, right in the middle of the state, we weren't touched, so that's, you know, a, that's a big thing about living in the We've told you before, if you're one of our tried and true viewers, that often people that live in Clearwater, if they're coming up the Gulf, mm -hmm. Tampa, you know, any place on the Gulf Coast, uh, come here for shelter during hurricanes. And the same thing on the Atlantic side, Daytona, uh, Cocoa Beach, they flock to the inside of the state where the storm usually weakens as it approaches and we get people here. So we've been here six years in November mm -hmm. and we have not really had a serious storm yet. No, God would, yeah. But uh, we were ready for it and luckily it didn't hit us too bad, but we, we certainly... We have our hearts go out to those people that were experiencing that storm surge. Yeah, we have seen pictures Incredible. On, on the news. And Terrible. Pictures and then in the newspaper about flooding and uh, loss of uh, damaged houses. And so it's it's been a, it's, it's terrible, it really is. And our hearts go out to them and we, uh, and, and I was real impressed with the picture of how many first responders and trucks and the electric trucks that are lined up to go help for power outages. Oh, you should see it. When they come down here before a hurricane, they stage those trucks. Mm -hmm. And it it's, it looks like a, a military base. Uh, there are so many. There's 4,000. 4,000 4, first trucks. responder trucks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, it's incredible. We did not lose power. Some people did. Our daughter-in-law mm -hmm. lost power for... 15 hours. 15 hours. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, we could probably put up with that, but, she, you know, they have babies. She has two babies. Or what if you were on a respirator or had a CPAP machine yeah. or yeah. something? Uh, so yeah. we're going to talk about that on a future show, but we really feel fortunate that we weren't affected, and our thoughts do go out to all those people Absolutely. that were. The only thing that happened here, that giant cactus plant we showed you on a show last year, yeah. it got blown over, and that thing is in a pot this big. It probably weighs 150 pounds. It was extremely heavy. And it, it blew that thing over, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a chore, and you got to be careful when you look that up because you'll get all those little pricklies. Yeah. Yeah. And we had a few things blown down in the neighborhood, and, and those darn Washingtonia palms, like the one, the two that we got rid of, remember that? Yeah. They lose leaves like crazy, and, and uh, yeah. stalks, or what do you call them, fronds? Yeah, palm fronds. Yeah, you know, branches. <laughs> and they're all over the villages, but they've already been picked up mm. through our good uh, landscapers. So. This question is from Tammy Collins. Tammy says, you've mentioned that the villages is a great place to come and enjoy life. I read some articles where people said that only married people can enjoy life, and it's tough for singles. What's your opinion? Well, Tammy, that's a good one. We've, we have had that question on many, many shows, and basically, we feel like singles can have a great time here. It just depends on the single. The more personable you are. The more outgoing you are, the more you want to join in. That's right. There, there are plenty of things here. We had an article in the uh, Daily Sun that talked about the villages being America's most married place. Mm -hmm. How about that? Yeah. 
And I got to thinking, I wonder how many people are married now, you know, couples together in a home. The Daily Sun ran an article that published some data by the U.S. Census Bureau, and it had a listing of, of places that were the most married. Yeah. And the villages came out on top as the most married <laughs> metropolitan statistical area in the country. Wow. How about that? 64.9% wow. of the people here are, are married. Wow. So that's great. Yeah. Well, I got to thinking because when we were young, 1950s and 60s, you know, Donna Reed show, Father Knows Best, yeah. Leave it to Beaver, all that stuff. Yeah. Everybody's married. And I thought, I wonder how many people back in 1960 were in a married household. And I looked it up, and back then, 67.4% of Americans yeah. were married. And uh, that's, that's great. And then I looked nationwide. What is it today? What do you think? How many today? According to the census, 53% of the households are married. Okay. Well, some of them might be on their fifth wife or sixth husband, but... <laughs> But that so uh, anyway, we did it again, ladies and gentlemen. We made a list. We made the we top. Made a list. We usually are. It's a good list when we make it. So uh, yeah. uh, we appreciate that. Sixty-five percent of us are married, and that certainly is not meant to say that's the only way to be. We know some absolutely wonderful single people, mm -hmm. and now didn't this is not meant to discourage you or anything, no. but it just shows you that we have a lot of married folks here in yeah. the villages. Yeah. This next question is not really a question. It is a statement from our friends, uh, Jerry and Heather in the village of St. John's. She mentioned to me, she goes, I sent you a letter all about my husband going fishing. She goes, a friend of mine and I decided to go fishing. Now, this is her husband, Jerry. He asked where we should go, and I said, let's go to Jerry's, yes, you, Jerry, fishing hole on Charlotte Pond. We got there, and I hooked a catfish. As I was reeling in, a gator started swimming over. I was in a hurry to get the fish out before he got there, and when the fish was on the bank, my line broke, and the gator got my fish. My buddy got this video, and you're going to see the video. Wow. Yeah. Did you see that? I yeah. love the way they photographed that in slow motion. I've shown it to you a couple times yeah. there just because it's cool. But that alligator and I are on a first name basis. And uh, <laughs> what do you call he him? He always comes in when we're fishing. I take the grandkids there. Here he comes. And uh, we, we don't fool around with him. Yeah. But evidently, that was a nice fish, too. Did you see that fish? That was pretty good. But they're out there and... Uh, uh, you know what? It sounds like the alligators are getting a little lazy. They're not going to fish for themselves. They're going to go take your fish. Well, I think that's exactly the thing that happened when that fellow over in Pembroke lost yeah. his hand. Oh. He, was, he was bringing in a fish and uh, bam. grabbed yeah. him. Our next question is from Alan. He says, with all the growth and building going on every day, how long can Florida's water supply hold out? I've heard that it's in danger. Alan, that's a good question. And, you know, there are people on both sides of this issue. We have heard, and I have done some checking, and I've called people here in the villages. They say, no, there is no danger of the water running out. That we're, There's an aquifer there that that is huge. And, by the way, we'll talk later about uh, an airplane ride I took a couple of days ago. And if you're in the air and you look, yes, Florida is populated. And we are, we are stacked houses on houses on houses. But there's a lot of undeveloped land, a lot. And there is so much water and lake uh, property yeah. out there that it's, it's just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So a large portion think, no, it's not going to be a problem. But there are people that think it is. I got a news report from Florida Tax Watch. 
and uh, this was in the village's daily news. And it said that the state may experience a water shortage by 2025. The report indicates the water shortage is being driven by the rapid population growth and underfunded infrastructure. Pretty much what you said. Water is so important. You know, it's probably the most important thing to human life. And if we ever did run out, we'd have to skedaddle. Hi, Jerry and Linda. This is the height of Hurricane Helene here in the villages. And this week on Bubble Wrap, I'm going to tell you about a device that everyone should have in their house to keep you safe. It's called a weather radio. This one is made by Midland. It's available at Lowe's and other retailers. And what's nice about it is you can always come over here about 130 miles, 200. and get a weather report. But the really nice thing is if you program it correctly, you will be alerted even in the middle of the night if severe weather is heading your way. I'm not going to go through all the steps to program this, but suffice it to say it is relatively simple. You just hit the menu button and then scroll down. You can set the time there if you want, but you can set an alarm. You can set the language, obviously English for us here. You set your location, and if I come over here and hit select, I have it down for multiple locations. This goes by county, so I have mine set for Sumter and Lake County. You can add Marion if you're in the northern part of the villages, and so once you select that, then you can go over and pick the counties. It's very simple. If an alert ever goes off, this is what you're going to hear. rather obnoxious it'll get you out of bed and let you know something's going on it's super important that you get the right channel here so for us here in the villages it's not showing up pretty well but it's 162.500 that's the appropriate weather radio station that you'll need it comes out of sumterville the programming is as i said rather straightforward so you just always start with the menu button and then you hit down you can go through the various menu options one of the alerts is alert type. You can um, put it so it's ju uh, just a tone, voice, display, or a tone. I leave mine on that one. And then I'm going to come down here and hit set channel. We've already been through that. Um, and then you can set events. I've got mine set to all events. So no matter what it is, a watch, a warning, or an advisory, I will know all about it. In order to make sure that you get all the alerts that you're supposed to hear, over here, there's a little switch, and it has to be in the on position. You can see they've got that highlighted in red because it's important that that is always on. We have ours in the bedroom because if something happens in the middle of the night, I want to know about it. You can also place it in the kitchen, but hopefully you can hear it from the bedroom. Uh, because the alert is very loud, you should be able to hear it. It should be no problem. The weather radio will alert you of hurricane watches and warnings, severe thunderstorm watches and warnings, tornado watches, the whole thing. You will know about it before your neighbors if you have a weather radio in your house. I highly recommend it. I'm Peter Bernard, and that's this week's Bubble Wrap. Thank you, Peter. It would definitely be a good thing to have. And just so you don't think you're alone, we have it. The Yay! Same one. We have the same one. And baby, if you set that for the alarm to go off, well, it did the other night. We had some folks over. That alarm went off, and boom, we, yeah, we, we went we in and checked it. Go, oh, my gosh. And it was a tornado watch. Yeah. Yeah, so those are neat. They're very Thank nice. you very much. We appreciate you, Peter. It's time for Pet of the Week. This is our lab, Coho. She is 12 years old and lives in Bay City, Michigan. This is what she does best. She loves to sleep and nap, but she does a lot of other fun things with us too, as you'll see. <laughs> loves to go for walks at Tobacco, Tobacco Park in Bay City.
Oh, thank you for sending that in. You know what I loved about that one? When he was pretending to be asleep and he heard you talking about him <laughs> and that old tail went thump, thump, thump. <laughs> That's another lab. We've had labs on here lately. I love labs. They're so friendly. They're Thanks so much for that. Time. Hey, has anybody ever been to Cat's Deli in New York? I think that's where they filmed that scene in that movie when Harry met Sally, that classic scene. Uh, yeah. When she said, I'll have what she's having, that other lady. That was good. Uh, we've been there. Have you been there? I just, I saw this picture and I thought, man, I'm going to share that with our viewers. If you ever get to New York, go over to Cat's Deli and take your pocketbook because it ain't cheap. But look at these sandwiches. The pastrami sandwich, 29 bucks, but that is one heck of a sandwich. Very good. Corned beef. Nice. The brisket, though, that would probably be be my cup of tea, don't you think? Yeah. And how about a turkey sandwich? Yeah. Always popular. Yeah. But Cat's Deli, I saw that, and I don't know why. I just like to talk about food. <laughs> you like food. <laughs> this is from George Lindsay. Hey, how about that? There you go. That's Goober. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Do you know Goober was... He's watching our show? I, th I don't think he's with us anymore. I no. think he's gone. But George says, so if you're not a multimillionaire, don't consider living there, the villages. Mm -hmm. Well, George, it's obvious that you have the wrong impression because I don't know too many multimillionaires. Well, I mean, I know a few. But uh, most yeah. people are regular folks here. We've, we've got mechanics, mm -hmm. truck drivers, factory workers, mm -hmm. cops. You know, teachers. Yeah, we're not millionaires. <laughs> no, no there, there are people from all walks of life. And, uh, you know, that's a common misperception that it costs a lot more to live here than it does other places. I don't think it really does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have we have uh, an amenity fee, which would be comparable to somebody else's HOA, but it's only $194 a month. Mm -hmm. You know, and other than that, we have a district fee and a fire department fee, but that's seven or $800 a year. Mm -hmm. So it's really, those, those are the only ones specific to the villages. And you can do other things, like you can uh, uh, get the uh, villages.net to book your tea times, $8 a month, you know, and a, yeah. a, a few other things. But there are always spending uh, situations that are specific to the area you live in. Yeah. And it's not that bad here, George. So, you know, you do a little better checking. I don't know where you're getting your information, probably from the people that put out all those other rumors. This next question is from Julie. I've watched many videos of tours of neighborhoods in the villages, yours and other creators. What? <laughs> and I've noticed there are not any sidewalks within neighborhoods. Why is this? Thanks. Well, we really don't need the uh, sidewalks in the neighborhoods. Our streets are pretty wide. Uh, we People do not park on the streets. So um, we have places to walk and walk our dogs and, and uh, ride our bikes. Uh, it's uh, very comfortable. Uh, if you want to go on a sidewalk and you can go on the major roads like Hillsboro and those other side streets that are more uh, bigger, bigger streets. So we don't need them. Yeah, th these neighborhood streets like, like where we live in Dunedin, mm -hmm. during the day, there are lots of people that do park on the streets because they're, they're maids or they're grass cutters, or they're HVAC people. Right, there's And you might have services, to walk around them, but, the, but, but there's not a lot of traffic on these streets in our area. And so that's why we don't have nor need. If we put a sidewalk in, we wouldn't have any front yard at all. That's true. You know, we live on a postage stamp. We don't want a sidewalk running through it. <laughs> but if you go out to Hillsboro, there is a darn nice sidewalk it all is. the way down. That's a good two-mile one. Yeah, it's all the way down uh, Hillsboro. Mm -hmm. Pinellas has a sidewalk. You know, lots and lots. Anna Maria has a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. You know, any place you have that special trail for golf carts. It's a special use thing. It's got the diamond symbol on it. You're going to have a sidewalk. Yeah. Now, Morse Boulevard, like she said, yeah, no yeah. walking. Yeah. You would walk on the multimodal trail that runs yeah. next to right. Morse Boulevard. Same thing over at Buena Vista. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's okay. Don't worry. Paula says that she wants to drive down in her RV. We're staying at my brother-in-law's house and wonder if we could park the RV in the Israel Center. I think you mean Ezel Recreation. I don't think you can keep them at the house. Well, you, you can park them at a house, but no more than 72 hours. Yeah. You know, nobody wants 
to buy a house and keep it looking nice and plant your flowers and shrubs and then have somebody park an RV where it blocks your view. No, but you can do it when you're getting ready for a trip and you can do it when you get home from a trip. But there are places to park them. Uh, in fact, I saw this note the other day that says you cannot park at the rec centers. I don't know uh, who submitted that. I think it was on next door. But evidently somebody was nightly parking there and got that notice and that's what you'd get if you tried that. And if you didn't move it, I'm sure you'd be towed. Mm -hmm. It's time for word jumble. Last week's clue was the final decision. The answer, burial or cremation? That would be your final decision. That's your final decision, <laughs> yeah. Now today's clue, a fix for a fall. The answer is, I'm not gonna tell you. You'll have to figure it out. And don't tell us what the answer is. Just let us know that you got it and we'll tell you the answer next week on the show. Okay. It's time for Sweet and Salty. This is a sweet comment from Jan Nakagawara. We have also watched every episode. Learned so much from you. It is a great service. Still just in our Sable Chase home only in July through August, but enjoy every minute of our time here. Yeah, that's yeah. most people. You know, yeah. you, you enjoy it here. And snowflakes, it sounds like you're a snowflake. Yeah. Can't wait to get back here, can you? Yeah. But life goes on up north. You know, a lot of people are waiting for retirement mm -hmm. and using that home while they can. Yeah. And that's just great. Now on the salty side, let's go to that one. I've got it right over here somewhere. I've covered it up with other stuff. This is from the Stony Greek. I'm 60. I live in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The taxes of my on my home are $11,000 per year. I would shoot myself before I'd move to creepy, cheesy Florida. Creepy, cheesy. What do you say to somebody like that? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to say to somebody like that. Obviously, they've never been here. They caught our show on YouTube and they just thought they'd take some time and and uh, let us know that they pay a ton in taxes, but they'd still rather do that than live down here and play pickleball and swim. It's time for Out and About. Now this week we're gonna be a little bit different. We didn't have a really a bona fide certified Out and About, so we went out twice over the past week or so and we've decided to give you a mini review of both places. Yes, we've been to both places, but uh, one we haven't been to in a long time. We went to Havana uh, Country Club and sat out on the porch and had a lovely afternoon. And we sat out and it was a gorgeous day. And uh, we had the special, the fried chicken special. And if you see on the pictures there, we both had the same plate. We had three pieces of fried chicken, some mixed vegetables, and it was Jerry's, one of his favorite vegetables, green beans and carrots. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and you know, those are the things he likes. He doesn't like cauliflower and Brussels squash sprouts and, and risotto and all rice. Things. But he, we like that. And it, we had mashed potatoes and then a uh, cornbread. And it was great. Yeah. They didn't have jelly. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> and, and we bought, like you said, those plates look the same because they're exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. But uh, the chicken there, I'm a big, I'm a chicken connoisseur. Yeah, yes. You know, I love cheeseburgers. I absolutely love fried chicken. You know, me and KFC have sort of a thing going. <laughs> we'll definitely have it going when you're out of town next week. Okay, go for um, it. But this chicken was not my cup of tea, really. They had yeah. some spice in there yeah. that I didn't love, but I loved it enough to eat it. Uh, yeah, we did. We ate it. Um, it. We had some extra. We took a couple pieces home. Well, yeah, it's three giant pieces yeah, of chicken. Yeah, we brought the two big breasts home. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it was, it was a good afternoon. Fifteen ninety nine each, like she said. I had uh, iced tea, so mm -hmm. 35 bucks plus, ta plus a tip. Yeah. It's going to be a $40 meal. Yeah, it's okay. And then we also went to Pisano's with a couple friends of ours, and this was on hurricane night. And it closed early that night, too, didn't it, Jerry? Mm -hmm. they, were, they were open, though, and a lot of places were yes. not open. They closed at 7 that night. But it's it's in uh, the Lake Deaton Plaza. That's right. That's uh, on Christine Way down near the, the Rohan Rec Center. That's right. That's right. 
and Jerry had a calzone. Uh, we usually split Ooh, one. Oh, Lord, Daddy, look at that calzone. He did to eight half. <laughs> that thing is a monster, and it was like seventeen ninety nine. That's the meats. Meat uh, lover, calzone. Meat cal yeah. yeah, meat lover calzone. Yeah, meat lover, yeah. So that's about $17 there. Mm -hmm. What do you have? I had a large Italian salad, which was very large. It was 15 bucks for that thing, and that was monstrous, and it had everything. L let me tell you some things they had on that Italian salad. They had pepperonis, ham, salamis, provolone, artichokes, kalamata olives, pepperoncinis, all kinds of stuff, and balsamic dressing. It was so big and it was uh yeah it was good it was good now we went with uh, al and holly now yeah. al had some uh, he saw the word vodka so he ordered it he didn't know what it was, it was called rigatoni alla vodka rigatoni alla vodka so probably his, yeah whenever and that was 14.99 and it looked really good and then holly also had a big salad hers was a gorgonzola salad, which had a lot of cheese, walnuts, red peppers. So we had a great night. It was yeah. it was nice. Yeah, when we go out with couples here, we usually yeah. pay for ours. They pay for theirs. Yeah. Ours turned out to be $38.27. And uh, after a tip, you know, we're yeah. talking about 45 bucks. Yeah. Or something about, like that. That's about the average here. Yeah. yeah. It's time for entertainment. Okay, entertainment in the villages. Always something to do. Always, always. Coming up October 5th, I cut this out of the uh, Rec News. comes out on, the, on Thursdays. And there's a fall craft show. And that's Saturday the 5th. They're coming up. And that's going to be, there's going to be 300 tables throughout four different locations. Colony Cottage, Laurel Manor, Rohan, and La Hacienda. And that's from 9 to 2. So local artists bring in all their... And that's in the Daily Sun. There you go. There you go. And this is kind of looks like fun. It's called Party in Pink. It's Zoombathon. And so on Tuesday, you can go to Lake Sumter Landing, October 8th, wear pink. It's a, a show of support for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And yeah, we've got our pink on. And uh, bring your closed toe shoes because you're doing a lot of dancing. <laughs> and then Wednesday, it's gonna, on October 9th, going to be in Brownwood. And then Thursday, October 10th, Spanish Springs. And it's from 9 o'clock each day, a free event. Not too sure how long it will be, an hour or two, maybe. But wear pink and enjoy some time on the square. So when we go to the um, entertainment world and the, uh, the Sharon, the uh, Savannah Center, and the Tracy, this is what's coming up pretty soon. Uh, but first off, I want to also talk about the movies. Have you all been to the movies lately? If you haven't, you need to try to go because at the Old Mill Playhouse has some excellent movies, some feel-good movies, and they're just great shows. We've been to three, well, we try to go once a week. Uh, we've seen Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. That was a lot of fun. I thought it was going to be scary. It eh, could be a little scary. Jerry didn't think it's scary, but yeah. And The Forge is a great one, and then Reagan. So those are three we've seen. Recently. you got to believe. Yeah. Oh, you know, that wasn't listed on the showcase this week. But, yeah, we saw that one, too. That was about baseball team. And then if you're going to the Sharon this week on October 5th, the John Lair Dance Company will be there. Uh, tickets are on sale. And uh, there, uh, the National Ballet of Ukraine is coming October 27th. That will be an incredible show. At the Savannah Center, October 1st, um, this is sponsored by the Villages for Veterans and the Edge Effect. It's called the Icons, the Show, and that's an Orlando-based men's a cappella group. And October 2nd, Queen Nation. That's going to be fun. They will rock you. They will. <laughs> yeah, they will. And October 9th, Grassroots with Rocky and the Rollers. We'll see you there at that one. Yeah, Jerry will. Oh, that's right. I won't be there. Maybe somebody can be done. Anybody want to be Jerry's date? <laughs> and then the Tracy, uh, October 6th is Spin Doctors, and I think it's got some plenty of tickets left. Please go to that. And October 9th, the Plain White Tees. So lots of great things in the villages. You all know that I work at Bargains and Blessings on uh, the first and third Friday mornings of the month if, I, if we're not out of town. Um, and we need some more volunteers. We are desperately in need of men, specifically men, to come help for carrying heavy loads. If you're able-bodied and you can carry things, 
pushing some furniture around. We really, really need you. Um, we're going to have a new store. We're obtaining another store in Wildwood, and it's going to be a women's boutique. So we're expanding, but we need a lot more volunteers. So think about that. Okay. Yeah. All right. With that, let's go to our shout-outs. And now it's time for... Jerry and Linda shoutouts. We're going to start off with this uh, photo of Frank Novascone. Now, ordinarily, we don't do this, but his daughter Amanda sent this in and said he's celebrating his 60th birthday, and she really wanted us to try to do that. So we did it for you. We hope you have a great birthday, Frank. Now, these other photos that you're seeing now are photos of you, people like you that sent us in their picture. We love that. Uh, you set them in in landscape form. That's wide rather than tall. That's right. Because if they're tall, I have to crop out in the sides, and then you either see something over here, or you see something over here, or I have to draw it in and do that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> so send those in, and we'll put them on, and uh, you'll be right there with these great people. And i got to say, I, I read all the comments. She reads them, too. And you folks are just amazing that you would take time out of your day to comment and, mm -hmm. and, and look at our stuff, and we, we just love it. And remember, if you have a photo of yourself in a Linda and Jerry t-shirt, to send that in. We're, we're compiling a video where we're going to put a musical video to all the people that are in these shirts. So, so please send them in to villagesnewcomers at gmail.com. And if you don't have one, you can get them at Custom Apparel. That's up on Wedgwood near the uh, Buffalo... What's it called? The Buffalo... The Buffalo, Buffalo Ridge, Ridge School, Buffalo Ridge, <laughs> and you can get it up there. That is a great company. They're, I, I love those folks up they're, there. They're sweet people. You can also get them by mail on their website. Be sure and join us on Wednesday. As I said, we have, we're going to have the under sheriff, and he's going to be here and answer your questions. Those are fun. We had a great show last week. Uh, it was uh, very popular, so tune in and be part of the fun. Don't be left out. <laughs> FOMO, man, it's fear of missing out. you got to get in there and get with us on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. All right? I guess that's going to do it for this week's edition of... Mailbag Monday. If you liked our video today, please press that like and subscribe button and share it with all your friends, neighbors, and relatives. Until next time. See you when you get here. On tonight's show, we're going to teach you the after. Today's show. We're, we, we're in the house. We're in our house. No, we're in our house. But all around Florida. We don't travel too far away from home, but we do like to travel a little bit. Well, I mean, we went to Japan. Okay, all right. There are some major trips, but <laughs> for months. Yeah, okay. But we're going to get to it. But anyway. <laughs> and the Villages is America's married community. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> the Villages. That was two minutes worth of mumbo jumbo how am i doing so far <laughs> now did you turn any of the knobs on that camera here we go take three don't we look a little washed out is your hair is that the way you want your hair okay here we go not no offense Tell me what you want to do with it. No, no offense. I didn't know. It was it's sticking up right here. I didn't know if that's what you wanted. Did I don't you? see it. Okay. I can't see it. <laughs> oh, why is there so much black right there? We, we're showing the camera. There we go. How's that? That's better.